Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. Now as you can see I'm still in the hub waiting for the new season to start and one of the most important things when we start the season is what are we going to build, which ships are we going to use. Now I already mentioned a few ships in the last tier list video about the frigates and um, you got there which one are the best frigates and these kind of things but especially if you're a new player you don't have so many choices what are the frigates you want to use or what is the best start to use you will always start with a few of the fg 300 the multi-role type and while they are not good they are also not horribly bad they are really cheap to build um it's a middle row generic type and as we can see here, um, strategic capability, grade A, um, low manufacturing cost. So that is great. Also only three command points for um, your fleet. Overall, this is pretty nice when we start because we need our resources to get our base built up. Also, you will have the armored type. Um, as you can see, the standard type comes with a basic 5 armor. The armor type already has 15 armor and you do get the chance um, for additional HP and armor increases from the skills and um, that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad at all, especially if we think about that um, things like the standard FG300 we check the weapon system only does 25 damage per hit so 15 armor a little bit upgraded you can already reduce the damage you get by around 50 percent and that with a very very cheap um ship type three command points um yeah this is a little bit more expensive to build but it's still okay um I will go into my favorite Excel sheets very soon and show you three setups that I would recommend for starters, for players that have certain blueprints and then also another one with also options what you can change um, to get a really, really good setup there. If we take a look at like my favorite ships, the Carillion for the front line, um, this is armor wise not so good but you get all these additional evades the base ship evasion here you already have 20 percent you can get additional evasion for different weapon types or um, the strategic option honestly i do go for the weapon types it just seems um to be more constant so um, it is in my opinion better because you always start with the cooldowns activated so for new players that are not aware of this if you have um let's go back into the jamming and let's take a look at the strategic type it says every 75 seconds for 20 seconds that would mean that you start without this um, skill active for the first 75 seconds now 75 seconds it's a long time in a fight and um especially at the beginning the fights will be very quick many times under one minute and that would mean that this will never be activated or it will just be activated when there's only one enemy left and one enemy doesn't do much damage so that's the reason why i do go with the other two um, options here in most cases now um we also do have rubies unfortunately i don't have the ruby defensive type the ruby defensive type has um, an amazing high armor base armor of 40 and you can also skill it up um, really really good if you got this there are not really many more frontline ships available in the frigates area and i want to focus only on frigate i want to focus on the early start of the game so let's take a look at the Excel. What did I prepare here? Now, if you're really a new player, a starter, you don't have anything. You will put FG 300s in the front line, the B type version. Um, you don't have to manually select where they are. The position of them is always defined by default. So when you take a look at um, the ships for all the players that are a little bit newer, um, let's go back to the fg 300 
we take a look at the combat roles of the multi-role types, this is the basic type, this is in the middle row. Now when we take a look at the armored type and we click here we see it is in the front row and it also has the emergency evasion strategy. When the ship HP falls to 10% it retreats to the middle row and that's why these frontline ships are so good, especially at the beginning. You don't want to lose ships, every ship you lose are resources that you lose. Um, these frontline ships, when the HP goes low, they retreat to the middle row and most of the time they will survive there because the fire will focus on a different ship in the front line. Now um, let's go back. This is the reason why I love to use um, frontline ships. They draw fire very early and they can retreat. Now I tried to get all these setups to the same total of command points and that would allow you to put a total of 7 armored B-type FG300 in that setup and 10 FG300 A-types. That's a lot of ships, that's 17 frigates. Um, they will not do the amazingly highest damage because as I said the uh, FG types they are limited in their damage capability. We can see here 1200 unskilled for the armored type, 1900 for the multi-role type. For the next setup we, take, we will take a look at the Xeno Stingers, three, uh, 6300. So 6300 versus 2000. Um, that's more than three times as much damage. So that's the reason why if you do have um, other blueprint options, I would recommend you to switch over. The Xeno Stinger A, um, usually you might be lucky because you always get the A version first. So if you draw a Xeno Stinger, it will be the A version. It's an amazing DPS ship and um, it does three times or even more honestly it does much more than three times as much damage as an FG300A because it's energy based it's rear row um, it can be skilled to amazingly high values um, for the Ruby B iron cannon also great ships the problem is you first will get the Ruby A and then you have the chance to get the B or the C type so it is a little bit harder to get same for the Reliat C type um, also torpedo energy weapon based um, you will get first the A version and then you have the chance for the B or the C but as soon as you get any of these I would switch them out nearly Every other frigate is also doing more damage, but you have to take in mind they might also be more expensive. Anyhow, if you're a starter, you don't have anything else, um, use the armored type, build them. It really makes sense to have them in the front row. It will reduce your losses, therefore you will have more resources. And then just build the A-type as DPS. Now, for me, I will go with a Carillion Special in the front row. So this is the second setup example I have here. Because it is a high evade ship, also I don't have the Ruby C yet, but um, high evade means it evades and that means it gets less damage, less damage, lower chance to get um, killed, lower chance to get killed means at the same time it will um, allow you to um, reduce your resource cost. So if we take a look at the special type, it's also front row, it also got the... Uh, um, emergency evasion, it evades missiles, torpedoes, it also evades um, energy weapons, so it can evade everything very, very well. Um, we already took a look at these evade skills, really, really great in doing so. Um, also, it got a lot of tech points already inside, so when I start the game, and that's something important to think about, let's go quickly back, um, always check where you do have a lot of CP inside, like my Xeno Stinger, you can see here, um, I do have 60 um, tech points already inside, meaning I can already skill this directly from the beginning with 60 points and make it much, much stronger than any other ship, like um, even if I would get the Ruby um, B or C, I only have two tech points in the ruby yet, so my Xeno Stinger, my Carillion with 57, they will be much much stronger because I do have more tech points. Keep that in mind, um, if you like a uh, middle, um, middle time player, someone who already played some time, 
Um, you might have one ship with 20 or 30 uh, command points. This might be better than a ship that is higher in tier, but you start with zero command points. So it's very early in game. Um, these command points, ca uh, sorry, these tech points can be very, very valuable. Tech points, not command points. Now, as you see, I also put it to around 50, 51 total command points in this case. I use three Carillion special. I would always recommend you use at least three ships in the front at the beginning. Everything less than three is really... It doesn't work very well. Many times they get skipped and then the damage goes directly to your DPS ships. Um, minimum three, five are getting even better, but usually I do start with three. I build three Carillion, I use a three FG300 I have from the starting. And after this, I will build around five Xeno Stingers as DPS. Um, that will be my starting fleet. From there, I will continue building Carillions, building Xenos, till I am at the max, 10-10. But um, three Carillions first, then additional five Xenos. For me, that works really best. It saves me a lot of resources because I can reduce my losses. Um, same thing there. You can replace the Xeno Stingers easily with Ruby, B, Iron Cannons. DPS are always easy to replace. Um, really at sea torpedo if you have them. Um, any other high DPS ship if you might have one. But these three, um, honestly, the Ruby B is a Xeno A. They are the best one. The really at sea is also good. Um, that would put us into the next category. So here we put the Ruby C, the defensive type, into the front row with high armor. Now, even if I would have the Ruby B iron, I probably would try not to use it. And the reason for this is again the tech points. I would put my tech points now in the defensive type so that it is as strong and as um, robust as somehow possible. That means if I would put the Ruby B as DPS, I don't have tech points for the Ruby B to make it strong very early in game. And that's the reason why I would recommend in this case to use the Rayliad C or the Xeno Stinger A, that you have um, a separate tech point source and can upgrade the weapons of the DPS ship while you at the same time can upgrade the survivability of your front row ship and then also sure you want to make um, as much damage with the front row as possible because you got that ship already there. Same concept here, same strategy, building three um, defensive rubies first, Use it with a 3 FG300. You very likely have to get a few repairs. Call them back before you lose them. They are expensive to build, so you don't want to lose them. And then you can start building Radiat Seas. As you can see here, to get to the same amount of comment points, we can build 7 Radiats compared to the 5 Xeno Stingers. Um, and that little bit compensates for the lower damage the Radiat Sea will do compared to the Xeno Stinger. Now, as I said, um, I think it's very important to consider the ships you have. I mean, you have no other chance because you cannot use anything you don't have. But um, like you can see here, I do have 52 points on the Rayliad. I don't have points on the Ruby. So if I would not have the Carillion, I would use the Ruby as um, tank ship. Then I would use all the CP I have here to make it... Um, to increase the armor, to increase the HP, um, and then I could use the Rayliad, the 52 tech points here, to make it hitting as hard as possible. So um, I have this problem when I tried like the Xeno Stinger, the special version, and the anti aircraft. They do use the same tech points, so it's really getting difficult to skill both of them at the same time. Keep that always in mind. And that's also the reason why you can see I do have multiple frigates skilled um, with tech points. The Carillion as my tank, Xeno Stinger as my DPS, Rayliad as DPS and system damage, Noma as um, healer repair ship. That's now also one important thing. I didn't mention the Noma yet. If you do have the Noma as a support type, early on in game, this thing is golden. It is really, really great um, having a few repair UAVs. You don't need many. Just like bringing in two Nomas usually is enough. So if you do have the chance, um, 
that something I for sure should mention here. Um, oh, that doesn't look good. Let's make it like this. So, if you have the chance, bring in the Noma. Bring in two, two, three Nomas. Oh, excellent. It's best two, two, three. Um, they are expensive. They also cost 60, uh, six comment points. So you will be around 12 or 18. Um, but you got a repair ship. And especially the Noma with a Carillion early in game. It is amazing because later in game the repair doesn't work so well anymore. But early on you can out repair enemy damage. So if you have a high evade ship like the Carillion and then you have a few Nomas behind that. Nothing can really hurt you anymore. Now the problem you will see is you have to build all these ships. So um, I would not recommend to reduce the number of Carillions in the front row. Therefore I would reduce the number of Xeno Stingers and that's where it's getting difficult. Only two Xeno Stingers, they will make the fight lasting long. Anyhow, as a Noma will repair your Carillions, it usually works really good. Um, you can kill very, very high level enemies with this. Um, and as soon as the time goes on a little bit, you still can increase this. Honestly, my goal there is, um, is around this. Excel doesn't like me today. So um, my goal is to have at least five Carillions in the front, then 10 Xeno Stingers, five Nomas. And with this setup, I can kill. I remember, I think I made a video about this. Um, I was killing level seven pirates with this frigate setup. So it is super, super strong. I can't tell you um, how far you can go with a, a Ruby C, the defensive type, but I assume you can also go very high if you would add a few Nomas there. Um, same concept here, add a few Nomas, um, at the end get your 10 DPS ships and um, you should be fine. Now the fight still might take a little bit longer, but your Nomas should be able to heal. You have to increase the number of your defensive ships slightly. Um, but it, it is amazing. These fleets are super fast. They are quick to build. They are fun to use. And you can see I also put already 45 tech points into the Noma. Um, you want to see that you reduce, where do we have it, the repair effectiveness um, two times. The RTB we want to skill for the Noma. These are the most important um, skills. So our UAVs go out as quick as possible and repair as much as possible. HP, um, if you have later some um, tech points left over, you can do this. But before I do this, I usually go for armor. I even increase the damage from the ship. It doesn't do much. It only does 600 damage. So do not expect much from the Noma in, um, in regards of um, anti-ship damage. But it is really nice to have um, these repair UAVs early on. So... As mentioned, it doesn't mean that all the other ships are complete crap. Honestly, most of them are. If you take a look, we get like 2,600. Even this pulse can type, it is so sad. I was thinking great, the mirror might be great as an energy type, but 1,300 damage anti-ship, just not worth it. Um, what else do we have? Maris Serenatis. It comes with quite some nice damage, um, 4,000 damage. You can use this if you get it. Um, it's definitely better than the FG300. Mare Nubium, I don't really see any case where I would use this. I would use a uh, FG300 because it's cheaper, it's faster to build. Um, the Noma Siege type, uh, it's a special ship. It does damage, siege damage, so if you attack cities, um, but I wouldn't build it because it's really, really expensive to build and it doesn't help you anywhere else. So um, if you don't have the top tier ships, the Ruby, um, the Xeno Stinger or the Reliad, um, 
C type. You still can use the Relia at A type, 3500 damage. It's pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't use the Mar Nurimum, Nubium. Um, the Mar Serenitatis is very decent anti ship. You can use that one. So, oh, sorry. Um, Reliat, Mare, or if you have, sure, the Ruby, Xeno Stinger. Um, they are really good. Mare Tranquilatis. It is cheap to build, that's a good thing. Um, it does more damage than the FG300. But um, the problem is you should not have tech points in here. As you see, I put 15 tech points inside there. I would not recommend you to put tech points into the MT. Um, it's just not worth it for the later game. Now, I hope that video helped you um, for your start into the game, no matter if you're a new player or someone who already plays a little bit longer. As always, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what kind of setup do you use very early in game when you started. And then I see you all in the next season and on the next video again.